All right, guys, welcome back to Frugal Homestead. So today I'm going to be doing a install of a whole house water filter on our washing machine. Now, some backstory of why this happened. We had our well house froze off because the light bulb popped in it and the washing machine was running when it froze off. So after I got it warmed right back up and the line gave way, all the crud that was stuck to the line, iron, sediment, stuff like that, that came up out of our like 350 or 380 foot well, just blasted through the line and guess where it all went? Right into the washing machine. So it messed up a load of clothes. I was able to save some of them, but they're bleached out now because I had to use a lot of iron out and it bleached out a lot of the colors on some of the clothes so that just I just can't let that happen no more not to mention I'm constantly pulling the little screens out of the back of the washer and cleaning them out because it'll clog up and the washer won't work I do have one of these whole house filters outside in my well house but about every month or two the filter goes bad and it lets stuff pass through there, I know water softeners, I know all this stuff. It's just not been a problem. You know what I mean? This needed done, I'm gonna do it. Figured I'd take you guys along with me and show you how I do it and how easy it is. I think it's easy. This little guy here is the DuPont whole house filter. It has a really crappy mount, but you can get these things. I think they're like $11 on Amazon. Um, you can get better ones. I'll put a link to one in the description box um, if you're interested. But basically we're doing this the easy way. We're screwing it to the wall and then we're going to take and run a set of hose bibs out the top here and then hook washer hoses onto the hose bibs and basically just run it with washer hoses. No plumbing needed. So let's get started. Alright guys, so I got these hose bibs that have three quarters on one side and a hose bib on the other. It's got shutoffs on it. These are the more expensive ones. You can get cheaper ones. Uh, I think these ones were $8, $7, $8 a piece. I just usually go with the brass style because they're not all the way through brass anymore, trust me. This is what I'm gonna use. I've already installed one as you can see. So the three quarters end goes into the end of the filter. I have applied Teflon tape to the fittings, which some people may say is not necessary against plastic. I'm doing it anyways. I don't like to take chances with plumbing. I don't like plumbing. I don't definitely don't like redoing plumbing. So 59 cents and has never let me down yet. So I'll tighten that up. <clears throat> You would probably want to use a wrench normally, but as you can see, there's no more room for threads because I cranked it in there by hand. So now this is our unit. So we take our water and run it to the inlet with a hose. And then where it says out, we take it and run that to the washer. Now on our washer, we only have cold water running to it and it's split, okay? with a mixer hose. Um, the same places you can buy these washer hoses, you can buy what's called a mixer hose. And basically all that is, is it goes from one hose to two. That's it. Um, if you had hot water going to, you would want to put two of these up, one for hot, one for cold, if you wanted. But since we run all cold, we only have to put the one up. Now, here's your mounting tray. Like I said, these have very poor mounts. So you gotta kind of angle them into the stud or find a double stud. So I'll get this mounted. I'll bring you guys back, show you the plumbing as we hook it up. Then we get to see if it leaks. And if it does, then my wife gets to laugh at me. All right, guys, so I got it mounted on the wall. I used some uh, roofing metal screws that are galvanized. That way if they do happen to get wet, it shouldn't hurt them. I just used four of them and they were about two and a half inches long, three inches long. So both in at an angle. 
And what it's going to do is it bite that stud. The mounting bracket's crap anyways. I'll end up probably going back later and drilling a hole in the center and putting another screw in it. So let's get started with the next step. Water's off. Take pliers. We're going to take the water fitting off the wall. That's our first step. the drain hose so now we're gonna hook it on our outside that I made the number one mistake when dealing with washer hoses and I'm gonna show you guys take it back off and show you Always make sure that you got a gasket in there. If you don't have a gasket in there, this is going to leak big time. Gasket's in there, so we're good. Let's put it on. And as I said, we're putting it to the outside. So this will go to the washer. Always make sure you have that gasket, though. If not, it's going to leak, guaranteed. Okay, we'll give it once to snug it. Okay, don't want to pull too hard because like I said, that mount's crap. Let me grab the other hose. All right. Here's our new hose. Checking it. Okay, no gaskets. So here's our gaskets. Put them down in there. Just like so. See them in there? Here's our second one. Always make sure your gaskets are in before you put anything together. Okay. So we're going to hook it up here at the end. Okay. And then we're going to hook it up to the water. Okay, that one's snugged up. Okay. Now, do not use those that come with it to mount that because those are crap. They'll strip right out. So this filter came with a sediment filter. Now this one is fine for using for this because we don't run as much water through the washer as we do say the whole rest of the house. On our whole house, we use these because they actually allow more stuff to go through. That seemed like a bad idea, but if you restrict your water flow too much, number one, 
this is going to clog up a lot faster than this. So you have to change these more often than these. I'm going to use this because it came with it, but after that I'll start putting these in it. And anybody that uses these knows this is the only bad part about the whole thing, is getting these lined up. Because they generally are a pain in the butt. You can hear it hitting the wall when I turn it. That's why I say these mounts suck. So once it's there, you've got what's called a wrench. There's a filter wrench. You have to put it on, hold this so you don't rip it off the wall, and tighten it. Now, sometimes these things don't go on perfectly straight, or the little rubber seal pops out, or a million other things. So I could very well be turning this on, and it could leak. So. <laughs> Keep your fingers crossed. So we'll turn these off like that. We'll start by turning on the main water and checking for leaks. Okay, looks good, no leaks. The other end's good, no leaks. There you can hear the water hitting. So now water has gotten into the filter. There's some air trapped in there though. So now we'll turn this one on, just like that. Now water can get out. I already know the connection's good on the back of the washer because I never undid it. So we're good there, we're good there. Now we'll kick the washer on, let some water run in and that will allow us to see water and get the air out of it. A lot of air. We keep checking our joints. We don't want to leak. That's one thing we do not want. You will get some condensation at first on that brass. It'll just feel wet, but it won't actually be wet because the water is so cold coming out of that well from 400 foot underground. Yeah. Yeah. Guys, I'd say we're good. Y'all hold that. Okay, so now it's installed, but if we wanted to go back and change the filter when it's time, we take our wrench, put it on it, turn off both these valves, okay, push this button, and that will release the airlock pressure. And then we just take it backwards, take it all the way off, throw the filter away if possible, I usually will take and get some water from a sink and wash out the actual filter housing. Check to make sure our rubber gasket's still in that lip, because if you don't, this thing's gonna shoot water everywhere. Put a new filter in, tighten it back up, and continue the process. I will probably just go ahead and automatically change this every three to four months. Probably four months. Just because I don't want it to fail completely and run into the washer. Now this filter will probably need changed in two months because it's a sediment type and it's going to clog up very fast. And like I said, then I'll switch out and go to the more standardized and cheaper filters. So success. My wife doesn't get to make fun of me. I mean, as a man, there's nothing better than getting it done and not having to listen to your wife go, you're stupid. Why'd you do that? <laughs> Why'd you get water all over my house? But now, this probably would be a couple hundred dollar job if you hired a plumber, and it's not that hard. You can easily do it yourself. Anybody can, especially when you do it like this and take the easy route and just do it with hoses. I've never had a problem with it this way. It's high enough now that my wife doesn't have to pull things out because she does change filters on our house. She's not afraid to do it. So if she wanted to do it, or for some reason I couldn't do it, one of the boys needed to come up and do it. 
this is an easy spot for them to do it. It's not as pretty, but functionality is everything. You know, as long as it works, that's what really matters in our house. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching us here at the Frugal Homestead. We do appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed already, please think about going down there and hitting that subscribe button, possibly hitting the notification bell. That way you see all of our upcoming videos and we'll see you in the next one. Yep, looks good. I did it, honey.